Watcho is overrated, but is treated like a masterpiece. Most doctor slash hospital shows, they can be okay for a while, but they get predictable quickly, and run for way too long. Grey's Anatomy has entered the chat. I've had enough of Grey's Anatomy. It's been on life support for a few years now. Don't forget to sort by controversial. You mean sort by Breaking Bad. I can genuinely see people fairly just not liking Breaking Bad. But I don't see how it can be considered overrated or not good. It's ambitious, well written and excellently shot. It had a singular vision for all seasons, and nailed exactly what it set out to do. Especially putting the show into the context of the time period it came out where this was still a relatively rare thing to happen. It's astonishing how consistent it was. Good tip. Made reading this so much more interesting. Spoiler, it's all breaking bad. How interesting is it to read the words Breaking Bad 25 times in a row? Basically Breaking Bad in the office. Part of that may be, because they both get repeatedly posted then downvoted alert. The office is not for everyone. Most people I have talked to that love, that show know and understand this. Breaking Bad is also not for everyone. But it's a little more subtle about it. The tough thing about that show, is you don't really have anyone to cheer for. It's full of awful people doing awful things. And some people need to root for a hero in a story to enjoy it. None of these shows mentioned at the top are considered masterpieces. You know, the classic television masterpiece How I Met Your Mother. Much like storied Academy Award winner The Big Bang Theory. This is us. It's trauma porn. Intense emotional sensations to get your weekly crime which is healthy sure, but not the masterpiece everyone's mom makes it out to be. So you know, when a little kid does something funny and adults laugh, then they keep trying to be funny and everyone goes okay okay. This is us is that, but with crying. That's a spot on analogy. I remember my mom loved it for a few episodes. Then literally said I stopped watching it, because I realized it was just sadness born. It literally only focuses on extreme happiness or extreme sadness, and has no middle ground. I liked the first couple of seasons, but ducked out not long after a character confronts their former abusive partner from years ago, after tracking them down. Just to tell them off, it read like absolute fanfic as somebody who has been in an abusive relationship. If you track them down, to tell them off they'd either laugh in your face, or just manipulate some more. Not stand there, and look all ashamed of themselves, while you march off feeling powerful. I'd had issues with it beforehand, but I love Milo Ventimiglia here enough to stick it out. But after that I just couldn't. Oh god yeah, that part was so ridiculously dumb. And of course they had to make him a loser deadbeat to really hammer home how triumphant that whole situation was for her. It came off so pathetic more than anything. My wife watches this. I call it this is sad. Agree. It's cheap emotional writing. My college writing professor called it dead dog writing. Everyone gets sad when a good dog dies. As an author, your job is to make someone feel something without the dog dying slash the kid getting cancer etc. This is definitely true. Deeply emotional and traumatic things automatically get boosts in ratings. Things with RE victims. Shows about slavery, etc. There's a pretty good joke about it in an American Dad episode where Roger is making a movie about a mentally handicapped Jewish kid during the Holocaust whose puppy dies. He aptly names the movie Oscar Gold. Because while that realistically could be a Jewish person's name that's exactly the type of movie that would win an Oscar for non-movie quality based reasons. I started watching on the recommendation of a friend and got as far as season 2 or 3. My friends still love it because it makes them cry every time. I never realized that was a marker of a good show. Good art can make you feel and be a powerful experience, but there are a lot of shortcuts used to fake profundity. Laugh tracks makes jokes seem funnier by social cues. Cringe comedy makes audience feel embarrassment by lingering on well-known socially inappropriate behaviors. Jump scares are contrived surprises. High pitch persistent noise, the whine of a frantic violin. Induces tension and anxiety. Body horror and gore are strongly felt aversions at an animal level to signs of sickness, death, and corpses. Some mix of tricks like these can be good, but over reliance on merely manipulating the audience with contrivances without substance usually makes a show or film feel derivative. I've watched a few episodes and wondered how the efforts lasted so long. The pilot was one of the best I have seen. For whatever reason, I have never watched another episode. Sounds like I made a good decision. 
you'll just naming every show that blew up. One of the top comments is Big Bang Theory. I was not prepared for such bravery. I bet if I sorted by controversial I'd see Breaking Bad with 500 down votes. The only way you'll see any shows that are actually considered masterpieces is if you sort by controversial and look at the ones with 500 down votes. The answers in these threads always just amount to the popular show, which makes me cooler, because I don't like it. Um, no. Type Squid Game despite half the comments being about it. No one in this thread understands a masterpiece vs a show people like, so you're telling me 13 reasons why isn't considered a masterpiece. What a surprise. People don't think Big Bang Theory is a masterpiece. It's a scredit. No one is here to answer the question. It's a about reading a title then doing a sort of freeform word association, where you say something vaguely related you already were looking to talk about. I get it. It is a confusing subreddit name. It's an ask credit thread about critic wing art. Of course it's going to be stuffed with lowest common denominator room temperature takes. Firefly. I haven't heard a single good thing about any season after the first. Way to rub salt in a wound I thought had healed. You are a leaf on the wind. Gorum son of a bee. How dare you. I swear by my pretty floral bonnet. I will end you. You take that back. Right now. I'm waiting for someone to mention the wire. So we can fight. I have my sleeves rolled up. You come at the wire. You best not miss. Asterisk S-O-M-E-O-N-E mentions the wire. Gunk and McNulty saying F for a minute straight asterisk. Grey's Anatomy that show just needs to end. Wait. It's still going. You know they are grasping for plot points. When they add a second surprise half sister. I generally find top shows by whatever's on top of torrent sites. I'm baffled every year that I keep seeing another season of Grey's Anatomy in the most popular in TV shows. Not only is it still going, but even the computer competent crowd is into it. Why I, I, I the story is so thinned. Everything that could possibly happen to a group of people happened to them. It's like some final destination sh- Seriously, how many ridiculous tragedies happened to these same doctors? A mass shooting. A plane crash. Weren't like three of them hit by some kind of vehicle. Not one single Grey's Anatomy viewer thinks it's a masterpiece lol. Lol I always say this. Show is genuinely so bad. But I need my dramatic surgery fix. As a single person ever said. That show was a masterpiece. I hate hate. That I've seen all 17 seasons. For the past 10 years I say to myself not going to watch it this year that I hit a show hole in January. And I say well it's fine I'll just watch the first half of the season. Then July hits. And oops I did it again. I'm not even invested in it. All the people I like are gone for years now. I don't even like Meredith. Okay I kind of like Joe. But that shouldn't be enough to drag me back. I won't do it this year. For reals this time. Is Meredith the main character with a forever crying face? Definitely a lot that can mentioned here. But for me, The Walking Dead is something that always baffled me how it went beyond two seasons. They had the same loop of storyline repeated in every season they run. They find shelter. They go out for food. Someone gets bitten. They get overrun. They have to find somewhere new. Rinse and repeat for like 10 seasons. The first season followed the themes of the comic very closely, and that was great. It demonstrated how fragile civilization was, and how quickly people would descend into a state of complete barbarity. The zombies were just setting for their human drama, but then they cheaped out, and fired an excellent showrunner. But now it seems like the real challenge is for the writers, to come up with some new kind of settlement organized with some new kind of deeply horrific rules and there are really only a few that are plausible. All the bad guys, pretty much, are from the comics still just the stories are very different. My favorite part of the show is how new cars models kept showing up years after the fall like Japan was fine, and was delivering brand new cars to the side of the road in Georgia for them to find all with a full tank of gas and a brand new charged battery, lol. Gotta love product placement. I really groaned when they came across that one family of the girl and her elderly grandfather who needed regular oxygen. The girl somehow seemed completely helpless and oblivious to the entire concept of survival. As if they had just been chillin' inside the same house for over two years with no power, no water, endless food, no guns. Never had to step outside. It just seemed so contrived. A plot loosely written for filler that made no attempt at being plausible. Wait who did they fire? 
The Walking Dead is basically soap opera with zombies. Yup, right around end of season 2 I realized it wasn't a show about survival in a zombie apocalypse. It's a show about people that can't get along. Even when their literal life depends on it. And sometimes a zombie shows up. Yeah I absolutely loved season 1 plus 2. But every season after just got worse and worse. Honestly I really loved the fortification of the prison. I just wish they stuck with it there, and transitioned more into a colony like show where they have this fortified home base, but they still need to leave to get supplies etc. I would like to see 4 plus seasons of them putting actual walls up, repairing the other side of the prison, etc. Also using a tank was a stupid effing plot device, and I hate it. You know what's not on this list, Futurama. Because it's effing perfect. I almost got my knickers in a twist midway in your comment. Seriously, the show is perfect from start to finish. It's the only show I've rewatched, and I've rewatched it like four times. It's sad that it ended, but also very glad it has an end. Unlike The Simpsons or Family Guy, which just keep spiraling down in quality, because the show's end is long, long, long overdue and the ending goes seamlessly right back into the first episode. It's made to loop into rewatching. In this thread, shows everyone agrees, have always been awful. Nobody thinks they're a masterpiece. Shows that had a good first season or two then declined. Nobody thinks later seasons are a masterpiece. Shows that are watched as a guilty pleasure and even the fans don't take very seriously. Nobody thinks they're a masterpiece. I thought this would be the thread where people finally understood what overrated means. But it's just that same old thread again. Hash 4. People complaining about what's at the top. I'm late to the thread and 9 tenths top upvoted posts are fine repeats of moaning about noon understanding the thread. This is the most anti-content thread I've read in a long time. Oh. Come on fears no debate here. I mean. Does anyone beat back quote money he asked? This show drives me crazy. They want to set up an elaborate, long-term heist that requires everyone to work together and be professional. So they use a bunch of horny idiots with no impulse control. I tried watching it with my husband because I already watched it when it came out. First of all, how the f does it have multiple seasons? Also, I totally forgot I watched it while I was studying so all the filler was impossible to get through on my rewatch. Literally everyone the professor chose was the worst person for the job. Tokyo, the moody 16 year old. Berlin the serial killer. 13 year old boys Denver and that other guy. We couldn't finish the rewatch. This is coming as someone who loves him and whose favorite show is Naruto. But it's Naruto. That show is great, and 45% filler episodes. Do I need to say more? Holy crap this comment gained traction. Not only is nearly half the run just filler episodes, but most of the time half a damn episode is just flashbacks. I just finished rewatching the entire anime, skipped most fillers, and damn. I had forgotten how loaded with flashbacks every damn episode was. Sometimes there were even flashbacks in the flashbacks. There's some torrent floating around out on the web, called Naruto K or something. They took the show, original, and Shippuden, trimmed out all the fillers, and edited down the flashbacks that were unnecessary. They then stitched them together, so each fan edited episode is the same length as the manga volume. 72 volumes so 72 episodes about 75 minutes each on average. The whole show is about 90 hours. If we make this number relative to a standard 20 minute anime episode, that's around 270 standard episodes of content. Are there any long running anime shows that aren't half filler? It just kind of goes with the territory, I mean. Try convincing someone to try out Dragon Ball, when the original show takes more than 100 episodes to even hit its stride, and DBZ is so long and padded that they released an abridged version, which is still too long and padded. How many Dragon Ball Z characters does it take to screw in a light bulb? Just one, but it takes 5 episodes. Jintama, since it doesn't have an overarching storyline for most of the show, there can't be filler. Same with Case Close D slash Detective Conan. There's like one major plot event every 200 episodes or so. There's 1031 episodes, and it is still ongoing. Frankly speaking I could handle filler skip except for the rare good quality filler like Bounto Arc in Bleach. It's that easy. 
What actually made me drop the series was that it totally abandoned the style they were going for at the beginning for the sake of endless escalation of power. Think back to the side characters from the start, and up to the Tulin exam art there were so many abilities, and fighting styles that worked great in a show about ninja, that quickly became completely pointless. I struggle to think of any of those characters being able to do anything post the Senon fight. There was that guy who could dislocate all his bones at will, the sound trio, the Jinjutsu squad who hid in their clones shadows, and matched their attacks with them to fool their enemy and many others too obvious to mention who worked great back then but later would be nothing but cannon fodder against every single enemy. Kishimoto wasted all of that characterization, and we got a Dragon Ball clone despite the foundations being very solid and more importantly very different. Exactly, it used to be that they had to outsmart their enemies. Now it's just, oh I'm stronger than you, because of this form. Bust out the downvotes folks, the Super Bowl, no continuity, they keep changing the main characters every goddamn year, the central romantic arc between Tom Brady everyone on earth, got stale real quick, weirdest laugh track of any show on this list, guaranteed, the lack of female representation is beyond cringe. Besides Tom Brady there isn't a single female character for almost 30 seasons. But the final straw for me was the way they killed off Keepernic. Finally get a character with real substance kill him off b slash c cancel culture has no effing boundaries. Uck. At least the food is good at the watch parties. That episode with the nipple is where the show really jumped the shark. I thought the episode with the one shark dancing poorly was where they jumped the shark. Agree. Additionally, the song break in the middle of the show never works for me. Other shows with a song break in each episode such as Phineas and Ferb will seamlessly transition into it and incorporate it into the story. But in the Super Bowl the entire episode grinds to a halt for like 20 minutes. Then the music happens, which will have nothing to do with the rest of the episode. Then there's another long transition period before the action starts up again. Also, I get that some people like yearly episode release schedule, but it makes it really hard to binge. Way too long as well. Nearly 5 hours per episode. They could easily cut it down to an hour. I feel like most people in this thread were born after 2000. Not listed. The Wire. Why? Because it's awesome. You got the briefcase. I got the shotgun. It's all in the game though, right? I'm on season 3 it's very good. The Wire and Sopranos, the best TV shows emo. Gilmore Girls. Rory is a horrible person. Loving Gilmore Girls and hating Rory are not mutually exclusive. If there was no Gilmore Girls, the world would not have been blessed with Kirk. Gilmore Girls, a great show focusing on the lives of a single mother and her daughter, while their relationship may be strained sometimes. They truly love each other. Rory, the living embodiment of white, middle class, old money privilege who constantly makes poor life decisions and expects people to comfort her after said decisions, are like the show. But goddamn Rory and Lorella Lee get bailed out a lot. Luke fixes everything. He has his own issues of course, but everything would have gone to sh 100 times if he didn't fix things. I still enjoy the show. Rory is fi awful dude, makes stupid decisions and plays victim constantly. My honest fan theory, the show is being told from the perspective of Rory's memory. It explains about everything, like how an entire town is emotionally invested in a single mom and her kid. I never understood why all the town's people loved Rory and defended her, even when she was wrong. She's terrible, and I hate that they just let Lane be abused by her family, and it was all some joke. Her mum kept her from going to school for a while and no one did anything, sure. Lorelei had a talk with Lane's mum like once, and said something like, if you keep doing this you'll lose her, but that was it, and Lane's mum didn't change. Uck, the only one who helped Lane was Luke, by giving her a job, when she left home. The entire town enables her. Lorelei at least had to work to get where she was, but she also made horrible effing decisions all the time. That's the point y'all. She is a classic not actually nice at all nice girl. She is a whole type existing in the real world. She was raised to be nice and considerate and smart, and expects to be babied and coddled. She is selfish, indecisive and inconsiderate exactly because she was raised to be sweet and nice. She behaves terribly, but has very good intentions. None of you have ever met someone I will fitting that description. I get what you're saying, but I don't know that it was the writer's intent to make her so unlikable. A main character should be flawed, but someone you like and want to succeed 
I guess the revival was somewhat realistic, because it showed Rory struggling after a lifetime of being coddled by an entire town. She wasn't ready for the real world, still running around acting like a dick though. The remake was revolting. What crappy people. At least grandma turned into a better human being, and gave a sh about someone else than herself the rest was cringe at its best. How has Noon said Sons of Anarchy? It's ridiculous. We are supposed to believe that their club is the most important thing to them all, and they would do anything for their brothers, but they just kill each other. It almost never shows why someone would want to be in that life. We are supposed to root for the main character, because everyone loves him but all I could think was get those children away from this. It's a soap opera for men. Suits most of the episodes consists of these high and mighty lawyers consistently running into backquote dead ends, not knowing what to do, but they will be having a side conversation and the person they are talking to makes one remark about something and that's it, they have found their answers, on to the next episode to do the same exact thing, it's cheap writing and office drama, he said she said stuff, also every single one of them should have lost their license, and be in jail by now. <laughs>